Hey, what's up guys? Mike Red Fox. In this video, I'm going to do a 6 by 3070 Ti build. All right, so we got six cards here, six GPUs, 3070 Ti's ready to go. On the top, you saw in the intro, I have two EVGA XC3 Ultras. Below that, these are Zotac Amp Hollow Blacks. I really like these cards. I have the 3070, absolutely sick looking. And then below that, I have an MSI Gaming Trio ready to go. This I have in a 3060. Actually, it's up mining over there. Pretty nice looking card as well. So I'm excited. I have two of each card. It would be really great to have a matching set of six cards, but take what I can get right now. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of building a brand new rig with a new motherboard and putting together a frame and, and all that, I'm going to take out my grow tent over there. I have a 6x1070 Ti rig. I'm going to take that out, take those cards off, and then I'll have the bones of a system ready to go. Make sure I have enough power because these take quite a bit of power. In my testing that I've done, which you can see linked up in the video on the 3070 Ti, with Ravencoin, these are the most efficient from what I test at around 250 watts each. So that's about 1500 watts right here just in GPUs, <laughs> not counting the motherboard and all that. And I know that 1070 Ti rig in total runs about 750 watts. So I'm just gonna check our power setup I got extra splitters and power supplies and all that should we need it. So I'm gonna get that out, we'll get it up here, get those GPUs off, figure out anything we need to with that rig's bones, and then we'll add these cards in, get them hashing, get them tested, get them on Raven probably to start, and we'll go from there. So let's get going. All right, I got the 1070 Ti rig out of the grow tent, and it, it's been a few days, in case you can't notice I'm wearing different clothes. So what happened is this was on the bottom of my grow tent and I took some time because I had to take some rigs out to do some more cable management of everything that's in there. What happened was you know, during the crazy bull run, I'm getting 3060 Ti's in, 3070's and I just want to get them mining as fast as possible. So my cable management wasn't necessarily where I wanted it to be. So I tidied all of that up, took this out, actually went up doing a video on this rig, which I'll leave uh, linked up in the card. And I've just had this mining down here, this 1070 Ti rig, my first rig ever. Um, and it's been a few days, I just haven't had the time. And actually the, the temperature in this in my basement right now is not pleasant. It's about uh, 88 degrees in here with this rig and, and those cards and some others I have scattered around open mining. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get this rig powered off, shut down, for the last time, get these cards off and then just really assess what I have left, what I need to swap out, what I need to clean up, considering the cards I'll be putting on here, which is the 3070 Ti's. So let me get this powered down first, and then we'll start getting these GPUs off of here. And I can already tell there's a lot of oil that's leaked on the frame, so I want to clean that up. The motherboard's pretty nasty. Uh, this is an 850 watt power supply on here. Probably upgrade that to a thousand. And then the server power supply should still be okay for my needs. Um, the 3070 Ti's are definitely gonna draw more power than these cards. So I want to make sure everything I have set up is super safe, especially considering the 3070 Ti's won't be, won't be mining Ethereum, I'll be mining something else with them. Which depending on what that winds up being, it may take more power, and I'm not trying to fry splitters or risers or anything. And this is my first rig I ever built. So, you know, I'm already looking. I use Molex on these risers down here. That's just not gonna work for me. I'm gonna change everything to be powered by PCIe. 
I got splitters and all the stuff I need to make sure that that can happen. And I'll swap out these risers. These are old. I mean, they still work. They're just, there's a lot of oil that's collected on them, leaking from the GPUs just over the three, four years they've been on here. So I'll take those off. I'll replace them with some uh, GPURisers.com risers. You can check out their risers linked in the description below. And what else? Everything else looks good. The motherboard just got to be cleaned up. It's got a lot of dust uh, and debris that's collected on it. So I want to make sure I do that. And everything else should be pretty good. It should be pretty plug and play. Unless there's something I'm missing. These GPUs are still in really good shape for their age. This one I had fixed. Actually, I gotta turn my server power supply off here because these are still on. And these are all gonna go to some new home, except for this one. This one will stay with me. And until they do, I'll probably stand them up and, and let them mine on something for a little bit instead of just have them sitting around. But I really wanted to get the 3070 Ti's up on here instead of just building something from scratch that would have been kind of a pain I will have to do that but at least those cars can get going really really fast man this thing is dusty so I'll take a, a couple of these off we could take a, a look at them and then uh, I'll clean all this up off camera we'll come back and start figuring out what things I want to swap out. This uh, this one is definitely stripped. So we'll see <laughs> about getting that off. Um, so let's take a look. Man, I can't believe I'm taking these off for the first time. Oh, it's so nasty. This is a EVGA for the win too. Pretty nasty looking. A lot of oil that's just accumulated. A lot of dust. I haven't cleaned these in a while. Risers are looking. Uh, <laughs> riser. Oh, you guys should be glad you can't see this up close. <laughs> Those risers are not looking good. This one is broken, this riser clip. There we go. Alright, let's see if I can get this. I don't know if you can get this in view. How nasty this riser is. I'm gonna come around. Look at that. Yuck. Kinda just wanna throw these away. Right? Stack them up. All right, let's see if I get this one off, because that screw is, uh, the thread is like stripped out in the frame. So I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Let's see. There we go. Got it. All right, GPUs. You've been the best. Thanks for getting me started along this whole crazy journey. All right, here we are, left the mess. Those risers are definitely coming off. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clean up the frame. All the oil is just all along this bar here. Leaked from the GPUs 
down into the riser and onto the frame. So I'm just going to use some alcohol and wipes to clean all that up. I'm going to get these risers out of here, get those replaced, get this power supply with a thousand watt. And then once I get the bones of this set up, we'll talk through power and my thoughts and everything I'm thinking. So let me get all of that going and then we'll check back. All right, I've got everything cleaned up here. So what I've done is got all the cables removed, the old risers removed, I brought everything just down to the bare bones. I brought it outside and gave it a, a nice dusting and everything looks really, really good. I swapped out the 850 watt EVGA power supply for a thousand watt. I still have my 1200 watt server power supply. You know, SSD and all that stuff remains the same. And I have all those components wired up and ready to go. So what I'd like to do now is start getting these GPUs unboxed, get them slotted up. And as we do that, we'll talk about power and what I'm thinking for how I'm gonna power this rig. So let's get started. The first GPU we're gonna do is the EVGA XC3 Ultra. So I'm gonna get this open. We'll get it slotted up and uh, just talk as we go. So the reason I had to swap out that 850 watt for the 1000 watt is it just was not going to be enough power. What I had on there, those 1070 Ti's, they're running about 125 watts each mining Ethereum and that's power limited. And in the testing I've done on these 3070 Ti's, for some of the algorithms I'm going to mine, such as Kapow, which is Ravencoin, they're going to take a lot more power than that and I wanted to make sure I planned for it. The TDP of a 3070 Ti is 290 watts, which is quite a bit. So if they ran full tilt, I want to make sure I have enough power. And I'm also taking into account that they'll probably run 250 watts or so from some of the testing that I've done on Ravencoin. It's a nice car, man. EVGA just makes the nicest looking cards. I really prefer like their, their uh, 10 series cards, the For the Winds. Those are sick looking. These are still really, really nice. But I'm not a, I don't really like the fan design on some of their newest cards personally, but still, overall, beautiful looking cards. So, back to power. 80% rule, right? You run any electrical current, if you're running it on a circuit, whether it's a circuit in your house wall or a circuit in your mining rig, you wanna make sure that you're only running it at a max continuous load of 80% of what it's rated for. And the reason you do that, and I talk about this in all my videos, is that you wanna take into account any spikes that may happen in the electrical current. And if you do that, then you're gonna be really safe. And I know one of the things that people are most concerned about when they get into mining is make sure they're wiring everything up properly, right? You got this six card rig in your house where you live and you don't want to burn down your house. And I don't blame you. So wiring up everything properly from the beginning, super important. All right, so we're going to get this EVGA 10, uh, 30, <laughs> 3070 Ti slotted up on the end here. Man, I love these EVGA cards. I wish I had six of them. So get that in, and we'll do the other one. So, you know, when you think about that 80% rule, say you got a thousand watt power supply, like the one I have in here, you know, rule of thumb then would be that you don't wanna do more than 800 watts on that power supply. And then you gotta make some decisions for yourself, right? If you're mining Ethereum, you know your cards are gonna be power limited. So you can take that into account. The real absolute safest thing to do, especially for not only safety, but long-term planning, thinking about Ethereum go and prove a stake, is to plan for the cards running full TDP at some point. And if you do that, then you know your setup is rock solid and will be no matter what coin you're mining. And I know 
lot of people watching this video just got into mining or just got back into mining you know, over the last six months or so and, and all you've ever mined is Ethereum and that's totally cool but you won't be able to mine Ethereum forever and there even before that may come a time where Ethereum is not the most profitable thing to mine and every a lot of different coins use a lot of different algorithms and with that comes different power requirements now Ethereum is great because as many of you know it uses just the memory so you can really restrict the core in the GPU which then allows you to power limit this GPU so much or use a lock core clock or absolute core clock to really reduce the wattage that these are running at so on one hand you can plan your whole setup here, all your power supplies, your cabling, everything based on what the GPU will run at when it's power limited. And if you do that, you'd be great for when you're mining Ethereum and if you're mining on Hive OS, your overclocks are probably never gonna reset. You just gotta be careful in Windows if it crashes or something. But then you're gonna be in a tough situation when you wanna mine something else besides Ethereum that may use more power. And if you're using SATA to power your risers, you're gonna be having a real bad time. Or if you're using, uh, splitting maybe a single cable, three, four, five ways to power multiple GPUs, you're gonna have a real bad time. So the safest way to do any of this, especially if maybe you're building your first rig or just wrapping your head around how to do any of this stuff, is just build your rig and plan for the full TDP of the cards. And in this case, that would be planning for these to run at 290 watts each, which is a lot of power. And then you might fight yourself a little bit and say, well, man, that, that's gonna require so much power, and then that's more money for power supplies, and that's more money for cables and splitters. And you might wanna take the easy way out. And that's, totally your decision if you want to do that. I always recommend doing it the absolute safest way. And if you're an experienced miner, you know, you've been doing this a long time, you know, you've been mining with many generations of GPUs, you built many rigs, you understand how power flows through all these systems and you understand the wattage that cables can handle, then you may be able to make a different decision for yourself and that's totally cool too. And if you watch my 12 by RTX 3070 build, I made some different decisions for myself, but I understood the why behind it all. And I know I talk a lot about power. It's kind of becoming my thing. It's really how I got started with my powering GPU mining riser safely video. I'll leave a link. But that for me in the beginning was the most confusing part of all of this. And I even look back on this 1070 Ti rig that I built and I was like, man, I would never do that nowadays using molex for example i would have never do that nowadays jury's still out of molex all right we got the two evga 3070 ti's up there they are beautiful looking and now i'm going to get the zotac these are our zotac hollow black um card slotted up there i have a 3070 of these and it is sick looking really like the way it looks so I'm sure these won't disappoint let's take a look one of these I got from Zotac directly on their Zotac store and the other was Amazon if you're wondering although GPUs are still hard to get it's possible all right let's check this one out it's a big card so I like the EVGA too they're slim Okay. Nice looking card. Let's see, we got that off. Got stuff on fans? No. Just the one plastic. All right, I'll take it. I think I'm gonna put, yeah, I'll put these in the middle. They'll probably look pretty cool there. Not that it matters, nobody's gonna see it. It's gonna go in a grow tent but I will know. All right, so back to power. 
again. So I got the uh, HP server power supply in there, and this whole thing is going to run on 240 volt on um, 30 amp PDU. So that means that HP server power supply can run at 1200 watts. If you're running it on your standard house outlet that's a 15 or 20 amp, you're only going to be able to run that at 900 watts. Which then informs obviously your 80% rule and how much you can put on it. Get this out of here. Some boxes everywhere. But I'll be running it at 1200 watts, which means if I remember, I can, uh, the 80% rule would then be 960 watts that I can run on that server power supply. And then obviously the uh, EVGA, 1,000 watt, pretty easy math on that. 80% of 1,000 means that I can put 800 watts of a continuous load on that PSU. So then all together, what does that give me? 1,760 watts that I can use out of the system. And let's do the math on that while we can. 290 times six. And just GPUs ran full tilt is 1,740 watts. So that's good. And then the motherboard and stuff will take anywhere from 50 to 100. So we're okay. We're, we're really close enough, uh, but we'll be all right. Okay, let's get this other GPU out of here. Plus, like I said, that's taking into account running these full TDP, which I likely won't be from the testing I've done. I gotta do more. I'm gonna test this rig quite a bit, do some videos on it. Now that I got a whole build going. All right, we've got the second hollow black in there. Man, I listen, I uh, I know Zotac doesn't have the best reputa reputation out there, but I've been really, really happy with their 30 series GPUs, though I've never owned any other series of GPU by Zotac, but I have 3060s, the white ones, those are sick. I got a white 3070, got the version of this in a 3070 and then these 3070 TIs and I have a 3080 Ti over there in this same one but I think that one's gonna get returned because it was at MSRP was two grand and I just I don't uh, I can't do it the other 3080 TIs are cheaper by like 500 bucks I don't know why that one's so expensive so it's uh it's gonna go back I gotta return that that's just, it's just too much. I can get the other 3080 Ti's if I want them. I already have too many as it is. Uh, all right, MSI Gaming X Trio is next. MSI, for some reason, shrink wraps their packaging, which I, I, I haven't seen any other manufacturer do that. So we'll check out these cards. I have one of these in a 3060, the original 3060 that uh, you can use the development driver on. That's a pretty nice looking card, so hopefully these are cool. Check this out. So we got four GPUs in there, two to go. Talked about power. And to wrap up that conversation, and obviously we'll we'll do an overview once I connect everything. I like to also uh, as I wire this up, I like to do two risers on one PCIe cable. I just split it. And so what I'd like to do, because you really don't want to have risers on one power supply and its GPU on another one. I don't know, just in case. I really want everything to be all together on its same power source. So what I'm planning to do is then put four cards on the server power supply and then two on the EVGA 1000 watt. And the reason I'm not going three and three is because like I was saying, I wanna be able to split one PCIe to power two risers and not mix across power supplies. This is a big 
card. Wow, I did not expect that. I think this is probably the biggest one of all of these. It's thick. Damn. There it is. It's a really big card. Maybe I should have put these in the middle. It really doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see it. Except for this video. All right, fan adhesive, let's go. Word. Man, all right, and these, everything's dual eight pin. Which I just kind of got nervous <laughs> if this was gonna have another eight pin on it. I wonder if some of my 3080 Ti's do. So I know there's, what is it, the 3090's? Or even some, Can is there some 3080's that have three eight pins? Not sure, I can't remember. But this will all work out. This is gonna take me forever. What else, what else, what else? So once I'm done getting these slotted up here, now that we've figured out how I'm gonna power them all, I'm gonna get risers connected. We'll use gpurisers.com risers. Like I said earlier, check them out. They even have newer, better versions of risers than the ones that they sent me a little while ago. I, I just, I've had them on hand. I haven't put them to use yet. But they've improved on some of the components of their riser. And they're just, even, these are really nice, honestly. I'm not just saying that because they sent them to me. Uh, but the new ones I've seen in some of the other YouTubers' videos look even better. So I'd highly recommend checking them out. Look at this card. It's huge. It's got a sick cooler on it. Hopefully it, it stays cool. I guess this is uh, RGB. We'll check that out when it lights up. So after we do this, uh, get these last cards up here. I'm going to get the risers installed. And I'm going to power them up just like we talked about. And when I'm all done with this rig, I'll uh, get a close-up camera and we'll do a walkthrough of it. And then we'll get it on and, and get it hashing and at least uh, probably, I don't know, probably on Ravencoin or something to start. And then I'll do some separate videos, mining some other things just where you can see once I get it tuned up really nice. Maybe we'll do some live streams on it, I'm not sure. Probably I'll do Raven in this video, I think. Probably do uh, Ergo coming up, Z coin coming up. If you have any requests, like to see uh, a video of this rig mining something besides Ethereum, uh, let me know in the comments section and I'll, I'll make a video for it. Man, that card is gigantic. It's like in size order here. All right, let's do this last MSI. This is taking long enough as it is. I've had these cards down here. <laughs> you guys, you guys are going to kill me. They've been down here for like, I don't know, three weeks. I just have not had the time to get down here and build this rig. Especially I was like, I don't want to build a new VETA frame. Shout out to anybody who's built those frames. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to build a new VETA frame. That's like a half hour of my day building that. I don't want to set up a new motherboard and install windows. I know I should be using HiveOS. I just like, I don't want to do all that. It's like, you know, a whole three hours of doing all that stuff before you can even slot up some GPUs. Plus doing all this, oops, I almost dropped the GPU. Plus doing all this stuff on YouTube. You got to film it all, it just takes even longer. What is this thing? I don't even notice this came in the other one. Is this? I think it's probably like. I'm gonna open this. Is this like a support bracket? Because the GPU sags? Yeah, it's gotta be, right? It's gotta be like a support bracket for your PC case because the GPU is so gigantic. We're at the point where the GPUs are so big <laughs> that. What is this? I don't even know. That the uh, PCIe slot can't hold it. it will break off the motherboard. That is wild. All 
Alright. Just like a mess. You can't see it. Just like a mess of boxes right there. Alright, fan stickers. Red Fox versus fan stickers, round two. So yeah, he's been sitting down here for a while, and it's not for lack of wanting to get them mining, especially because I need to get them, you know, working and pay themselves off here as fast as possible, because who knows what the future brings for the market. Man. Okay, almost there. I can't wait to see this thing fired up with all the uh, RGB and stuff on all these different cards. Okay, last one. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay, got that. That, all right, let's get it slotted up. Man, I love building mining rigs. It is so fun. The maintenance sucks. Cleaning them, when one goes down, but building new ones, especially with new generations of GPUs and getting to test them, so fun. All right, let's see. Looking good, looking good. All right, that is all the GPUs slotted up <laughs> in size order, not on purpose. So what I'm gonna do now is get all the stuff I need for power, get all this mess that I made cleaned up, and we'll come back uh, and do you know, all of the power, and I'll walk you through everything, and then we're getting close. Then we'll fire this thing up Take a look at it up close, take a look at some hash rates on Ravencoin, and we'll have some fun. So I'll be right back. All right, so I got all the power roughed in here. I don't think I missed anything. We'll walk through it and I'll do the final connections as we go. So what I have done first is on the 1000 watt EVGA power supply, I'm gonna put two GPUs on there. So coming from there, I have the GPU's power, and what I'm going to do is put these two MSI cards on there. So first I'm going to do is get the 8-pin power going on the top of the GPU here. So we will get that connected. And then uh, we'll do the risers for these as well. So that's one. And this is going to be two. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I always struggle with these six plus two pins. Really struggling. There's one. <laughs> Okay, two. So that is the GPU's power. And now what I've done is coming off of that EVGA, you can see this is the cable EVGA gives you, the VGA slash PCIe cable. And then I've split that with a six pin to dual six by two pin splitter. This is from Deep in the Mines. I'm not sponsored by them. DeepInTheMinds.com is their website. I've, I've been using these since I found them, so years and years and years. I've never had one go bad. I use them for just applications like this, splitting to risers, or if I need to split to a GPU. Um, I also have them linked down in the description uh, for my Amazon affiliate link if you wanna pick them up there. But yeah, I love them. They're great, absolutely great. So you see them pretty much in every build that I have. So I've split that so I can do two risers totally safe off of one 
VGA or PCIe cable, whatever you want to call it. So we'll get that slotted up into these MSI cards. Nice. And I love these GPU risers, .com risers, because they have this really nice clip, man. The risers I took out of this, it's just like a pain in the butt when you gotta get in there and swap out risers or swap out cards or any of that. But these make it really easy and really secure to get in and out. All right, so that is the power for those two. We'll do the USB connections in a second. Now, now we're onto the server power supply. And so what I've done there is coming out of the server power supply, you get a six to six plus two pin. Since all these GPUs have dual eight pin on the top, I've used another deep in the mind splitter so that off of a single cable, I can power these GPUs. You could use, I don't know if you can see in the video, you can. I have a lot of extra PCIe slots on the breakup board of the server power supply. So you can run separate strands to the GPUs. And usually with, if you buy like a um, combo of the breakout board and the server uh, power supply, you know, you'll get a bunch of PCIe cables with it. Uh, by the way, Parallel Miner, that's where you want to get them from. Been using them, not sponsored. Just think they're the best. So you get a lot of these cables. You can pick how many you want to get, in fact. So you could run a separate cable for each one and not have to get the splitters. I just think that's a lot of cables and that becomes a little bit of a mess. And I don't know if it really does, but I've also thought about for my setup in the grow tent, does that impact my airflow at all? If I have more cables and more volume in there, less air can get through. So I try to keep it super lean when I do this stuff. I mean, you could argue that's another point of failure if you'd like, but um, if you're using high quality stuff, then you just, you're gonna be all right. That's it, don't use that cheap stuff that you see coming from overseas like you use good quality stuff this is an investment Be smart about it you know okay so we've got two EVGA cards slotted up here looking good so that's the GPU power for those and now we're gonna do the GPU power for the two Zotac cards here. All right, it's nice and easy. That's one, two. All right, last GPU power, the last Zotac. One and two. Okay, so, and I'll cable manage all this in a minute, but then the last thing we gotta do as far as power goes is the risers for those four cards that I just connected. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna slide these under. Actually, I think I'm gonna go up top. All right. That's one. Top. All right, the other EVGA, nice and secure. All right, last two. Get these Zotax going. Last one. All right, 
Nice. All right, looking good. So that's the power situation, and of course we got to do the USB on all of them. So this is not complicated. I know all of you can do this. So what I'm going to do is off camera right now, I'm going to connect the USB, and then I'm just going to cable manage all of this. And then that's it. We'll come back and we'll, we'll power this thing on, see if it fires up, and do some testing. All right, it's all done. Let's go take a look. 6x3070 Ti rig. Let's take a look at the GPUs, the two EVGAs, two Zotacs, two MSIs. Got everything powered up. See the breakout board on that HP server power supply. All the cable management is done. Let's go take a look around the other side. All right. So the GPUs there. See the HP server power supply, the EVGA 1000 watt, all the PCIe cables connected. It's time. It's time to fire this thing up. Let's make sure it works. All right, so we're gonna go over here. And I have it all, by the way, connected to my power meter, which is right there, which is a 20 amp. Will be enough wattage, capable of, of all this wattage. So first thing we gotta do, this is one of those old school HP uh, server power slide breakout boards. I gotta power that up first, all right? All right, good, we got GPUs running, two EVGAs. Zotax, looking good, looking good. And then we gotta fire up this ATX power supply. And that'll do the two MSIs, looking good. Fans are spinning. We got CPU fan spinning, everything's looking good. Just had some video come up. Let's see if we're loading, yep, there we are. We're loading into Windows, all right, all right. Looking good, everything works. I still know how to build a mining rig. All right, what I need to do now is get all the drivers installed for these on Windows. That, that driver set is definitely out of date since it was running for 10 series. And then we'll do some testing of hash rates. All right, everything is powered up. We have it booted into Windows. And you can see here, device manager is picking up all six 3070 Ti's, which is Fantastic, once I got the drivers installed. A couple other things I have up on the screen here that I wanna check while we start mining. Hardware Info 64. I'm gonna look specifically on GPU power and more specifically the 12 volt input power that's on the PCIe full slot. I really wanna pay attention to that as we mine Ravencoin. So what I'd like to do now, you can see my overclocks are all stock in MSI Afterburner. I wanna see what this thing is made of, how much power it could pull. I'm gonna start up T-Rex Miner here. And we'll just mine on one of the defaults here over to Raven Miner and see what kind of performance this rig gets. Hopefully it doesn't power off on me. I think I balanced the power load effectively. So we'll see. See the two MSIs, the Zotac and the EVJs both picked up there and it's just generating the DAG for the Kapow algorithm right now. Power at the wall is 2,000 watts right now, which is, which is wild to look at. I'm running on, these are 20 amps, and there's nothing else on this circuit besides this rig, so I think we're gonna be okay. But yeah, 2,070 watts right now. This thing is pulling at the wall and we're doing 212 mega hash right now, mining in T-Rex miner, Ravencoin. So we'll let this settle out, see if we get some wattage readings in the software and compare to what that looks like here at the wall. Still 2,080 watts. This thing pulls so much wattage. That is completely insane. Mining Ravencoin right now. So let's see, each GPU doing 35 mega hash. You can see the GPU temperatures along with the memory temperatures is the second thing you see here. Hottest one is 96 degrees Celsius. I hear that server power supply is picking up. As it gets closer to full load, that fan will get crazy. 
All right, we got memory temperatures and GPU temperatures are really climbing now. We got some rejected shares going. That server power supply sounds like it's gonna blow up. So I've had enough of this experiment, except for the risers. Let's check out the riser power. So still not a lot, 35 watts it's drawn off the riser, which is actually nice. Uh, let's just check a couple more GPUs here before we start power limiting this thing down. It's really not happy. See I'm getting some black screens there. Uh, power, let's see. Yeah, all right. Still not bad, 34 watts. I'm gonna close this down because <laughs> this is, uh, we gotta reduce the power on this thing. That is getting a little out of control. I could just feel the heat radiating off of this rig right now. It is, it is wild. I don't think, yeah, this is the most power I've ever pulled out of a mining rig, ever. Even my 12 by 3070 rig, since it's power limited, on Ethereum is uh, is only doing 1500 watts and this thing was just pulling 2000 watts. So that server power supply will start calming down a little bit, but let's open up MSI Afterburner and start doing some power limits on this thing. And each GPU may be a little bit different, but I think my target for this video's testing is to get them to about 250 watts each. So let's see where 80% power limit gets us when we mine Ravencoin, and then we'll start doing some overclocks. But let me just see how low I can get that power compared to the, the madness we were just pulling on this. And hopefully this server power supply starts uh, taking it easy for a minute. I'm sure it's probably hard to hear me. Yeah, I can hear it cooling down a little. So let's see what we get. Generated the DAG again. We're already down a lot at the wall. So we're down right now about 300 watts, a little over 300 watts from where we were. We're at 1700 watts is what this is pulling. Looks like we're getting around the same mega hash here, 212 mega hash. That server power supply fan is still churning. Let's see, 212 mega hash. I think I can get these GPUs easily to like 40. I'm not sure why I'm getting this job not found error here. I don't have any overclocks or anything going on this rig. Just super power limited. Let's see what we get. We need to get some stats here. We gotta get the, you know, we gotta do, we gotta get the fans pumping on this thing. Cause look at the memory temperatures. It's probably on, I know auto fan has got them at a hundred already. Uh oh, here's some that aren't. We need to get all these pumping to a hundred. I really don't want to replace thermal pads on these. This gives you a sense of the Kapow algorithm guys. It doesn't mess around. see all right every fan is at a hundred if you're curious ambient temperature down here right now is like mid 80s Let's see if we get these GPUs a little cooler so you can see we brought down most of them to 250 watts and kept that same mega hash and the EVJs are brought down a little further to 230 watts we lost a couple mega hash here we're gonna let that settle out, let these temperatures settle out. These GPUs are putting off so much heat. It's crazy how much heat these are putting off. I don't know how I'm gonna do these in my grow tent. These MSI cards are so hot. I mean, you can see right there, 100 degrees on the RAM. What am I gonna do here? I really gotta get these power limits down. So whole thing, 1,710 watts at the wall right now. I wonder if we can get, uh, so we're cooling down a little bit, 
cool down a little bit here. Should back up to 212 mega hash with those power limits. I wonder if we can get those other cards down to 230 watts. That's what those EVGAs are really liking. And those are the last GPUs on here, so let's try it. Let's try, we're gonna unlink these. Let's try these first two, maybe go down to 75 on the power limit. Try that. See where that gets those GPUs. We just, we gotta get this power down as much as possible without losing too much mega hash. And we haven't even, we haven't even done any overclocks yet. We're just trying to look stock clocks, looking at temperatures here, looking at the wattage that this is pulling. So we got everything down to 230 watts. So you can get a sense of why it's kind of a pain to mix cards in a rig if you're using Windows. Hive OS is, is easy, you just set the wattage you want the GPU to pull and that's what it'll do. But in Windows, you gotta mess with power limit percent, which every card may be a little different. Fortunately on this rig, looks like four of them are the same and those EVGAs are about 5% off from the rest of them. So still doing good at 35 mega hash with at 230 watts, so let's just see, let's try to shave off another 5% off these cards and see how much that affects the mega hash that we can get out of them. So we're gonna go down to 70. And we're just striving to find a little bit of efficiency here. And then we'll see what we can make up and what we can get to once we start messing with the overclocks and pushing that core clock and that memory clock a little bit. So let's do this. I'm just gonna do the first four and we'll leave those EVGAs as our benchmark for 35 mega hash at 230 watts. And we'll see what we can get. Hopefully get the uh, memory temperatures down a little bit. Those Zotacs seem to be running the hottest for sure. This EVGA is running really cool. It's probably this one at the end here, running really nice. All right, so we pulled those down. I guess I missed one here, let's go fix it. Yeah, let's get, we got those down to 215 watts. Pull in, still pulling like 30, ah, we lost some mega hash there. We're down 33, 34. Let's let that settle out and see what we get. And we'll leave these EVJs still at uh, what we know is probably our best result so far, which is 35 mega hash at 231 watts. We brought the overall rig wattage down right now is 1,580 watts or so. It's fluctuating a little bit but I'm pretty stoked with that. Look at those temperatures on the memory are dropping now. But yeah, our mega hash dropped quite a bit. That was probably the biggest hit. So might be looking at 230 watts, which let's look back on our efficiency. So we're at point, well, we can see right here, we're at 0.153 on the efficiency scale. Actually the higher number is better, so we actually are, are more efficient on these GPUs that we power limited. Let's see what those EVGAs can do down at 215 watts. And guys, I'm just doing this all live. I've only tested one of these 3070 Ti's once, and I'm already getting better results than I got back then. So 75 on the EVGAs. And I will definitely spend a lot of time tinkering with this rig and just trying different power limits and different overclocks. Uh, but for right now, I like to get like a sense just out of the box, quick stock run and then quick power limits and overclocks, what we might be able to get out of this rig. So definitely uh, still bringing down those memory temperatures a little bit. We got those EVGAs down to 216 watts. 
at the wall we're at 1530 watts right now I wonder how much this would drop off if we got it down to 200 watts because like the drop off right now is not crazy we lost like a mega hash and those EVJs are actually still still right where they were Let's uh, let's see if we get this down to 200 watts. What we get to, so that's going to mean 70 power limit for these EVGA cards, and that's going to mean 65 for these other GPUs. So let's get that moving here. Okay, let's see how much we lose. Efficiency number, we still, we wanna get that still moving up. It's going back, we were at, what did we started? 0.14. So as long as that number keeps going up, we know we're, we're going in the right place. And we were at 0.16. Looking back there, we actually may have lost a little bit of efficiency on some of these cards. Let's see, we're at 200 watts. We just got to refresh. Yeah, we just lost quite a bit of mega hash there. So the EVGAs, though, are still looking pretty good. So I'm going to say we need to stay around 200. 15 watts and that's where we'll settle out for now so I'm going to get these moved back up to 70% power limit let's see do I need to move those EVGA cards as well yeah because they dropped off that one's looking still pretty good those other ones dropped off and look at these are still dropping off so we really we really got to give this thing 215 216 watts to be efficient, as efficient as you can on Kapow. All right, so let's pump those back up. We're gonna let that settle out again, and then we're gonna do some overclocks. We're gonna bump the core and the memory on these and see if we can get, I think we could probably get close to 40 mega hash on each GPU, we're gonna see what that does to those memory temperatures, which are super disappointing already. Super disappointing. So let's see, let's get this thing settled out. We're at 1530 on the watt meter over there. And this is, this is typically my approach to overclocking, whether you're doing Ethereum, uh, Ravencoin, whatever you're doing. I like to run it stock, see what kind of mega hash I get. And then from there, really power limit the GPU as much as I can, making sure I'm not losing a lot of that mega hash. And then do my overclocks and push it after to see how much either of that mega hash I can make up or how much more I can push it over what its stock reading was. So we're back up to 216 watts on all the GPUs, which those EVGAs, seem to be the best cards out of this it's it's no surprise even with the size of the coolers on these msis the the silicon in these evgas is doing more mega hash for less wattage so just like the 3070s i have just absolutely killer cards nice job on those evga so let's push up the core a little bit i'm going to do the same on all the gpus i'm going to go up 100 on the core clock and uh, I'll do that while this miner is running. Sometimes you may want to stop the miner when you're doing overclocks and relaunch it, but what the hell, let's give it a try. And we'll see what uh, results this gives us. So we were at like 33, 34, 35 mega hash per GPU, 206 mega hash for the whole rig. So we'll see what we get here. So we've already got the mem temps 
going up. We're up to 208 mega hash. I guess this is just going to be a thing. Oh, I got a fan stalled here because of the cable. Might, might be why that car is running a little hot. So this just might be a thing with these 3070 Ti's that here we go again with that, um, was that GDDR6? Uh, memory, whatever these have, 6x memory, I can't remember. It's just runs so, so hot. All right, what are we up to? 209. Let's see if we can push that core a little bit more. I'm just going to YOLO. We're going to go 200. See what we get, see if we got any crashes here. All right, we got everything up to 35 mega hash now, which is nice. So we're, we're getting back some of that original mega hash that we were losing. And those EVGA cards are doing the same at lower wattage. So first impressions, if you're gonna do a 3070 Ti rig, get EVGA if you don't want to be open in GPUs and you want to have some more efficiency, uh, which is really good to see. 211 mega hash coming in, uh, 1600 watts at the wall. Let's, uh, let's push that memory a little bit. I'm going to go to 750 to start. See what we get there from our 211 mega hash. Server power supply finally calmed down. That's nice. Don't buy these Zotac cards, tell you that. 3070 Ti's, even though they look sick. Look at those memory temperatures climbing. Super disappointing. 35 mega hash. Let's see if we can get a little bit more out of this. You know, we could probably get more if we pushed up the power limit a little bit, but I really don't want to do that. We might be starving these GPUs a little. There we go, we got 36 mega hash, 217 total. 218, climbing now, really like that memory. I like to get that memory added. And we'll push that memory a little bit more once this settles out, so our 218 mega hash. 220 mega hash. Really like that memory. Yeah, these GPUs, uh, 200, well, we got 221. We're at 35 to 37 mega hash per GPU. EVJs are running so much cooler. I can just feel it. Even look at the size of the cooler on this MSI. It's crazy. All right, let's push it a little bit more. We got about uh, 221 mega hash. So let's go memory 1200. See if we get a crash here. See what these things are made of. Ooh, we got a crash. We got a crash. So that was at 750. So we're gonna we're gonna reboot here. We're gonna do a reboot, get that back up, and we'll try a thousand. All right, we're back up. I got TRX miner started. I got those overclocks and power limits set in. 200 on the core, 1,000 on the memory. We'll let that settle out here and see what kind of results we get over the next few minutes or so. So let's see, I think I got all the power limits in right. Let's see what this reports once we get the individual GPU reportings. 1,640 watts at the wall, currently reading 228 mega hash full rig let's see just want to see those GPU results temperatures 
etc. I got the fans full blast, 100%. Let's see what we get here. All right, looking good. 230 watts each GPU. Those EVGA GPUs are just killing it on efficiency and mega hash. So let's just call it 228 mega hash right now. So let's do some calculations and check out profitability. So 228 mega hash. I'm going to do full system, 1,640 watts. We'll leave that at the standard 10 cent electric rate to calculate on that, see what this rig will make per day. Let's check it out. So this will make $21.28 per day mining Raven coin right now, which, hey, I'll take that. And you can see after a month, $638. Uh, which essentially pays off one of these GPUs in a month. These were the most, the cheapest one out of the bunch. So, all right, let's uh, switch over cameras here and we'll do a wrap up. So that's it guys. That is this very long video, I'm sure. Six card 3070 Ti build, got it mining Raven coin right now. Some things that I'm already thinking about is those memory temperatures are definitely not where I want them to be, especially considering this will be going in a grow tent, which the airflow is really good in there, but I'm still a little nervous about it. We can already see that these EVGA GPUs are just killer as compared to the Zotax and the MSIs. And the things I need to do is just spend some time with this rig, tinker with it a little bit more. You know, it could, it could take hours, it could take a day to find a real stable result that brings efficiency and brings performance. And since I have different GPUs in here with different factory overclocks and all that, it just means tinkering per GPU, especially with the silicon lottery that each might have. We already see that coming into play with the EVGA cards. So we'll probably do that in some live streams or something coming up soon or a separate video. But thanks for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun doing this. Hit the like button if you did enjoy the video subscribe for more GPU mining content. Jump in my Discord. The link will be in the description below this video. If you want to chat, any of the parts that I use for all my rigs are always linked in the description below. And as always, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next video.